Today we're not going over just one, not two, but three different mouse pads. Number one, we're going to be talking about the Arineer Gecko. Number two, we're going to be talking about the 4114 Aero Pad. And at number three, we have the Ember Edge Pad to go through. So let's get into it. All right, so starting with the Arineer Gecko, there was a video whenever they initially released this that they s literally stuck this mouse pad on a car and they started pulling it forward as they walked backwards. Obviously, this is incredibly sticky, but there's one thing that's been really interesting to me. So, if you've seen any mouse pads that have a very sticky base, it's typically an alpha cell. And when you have something like an alpha cell with the Pulsar ES2, um, as well as other pads that are reviewed, whether that be the Curse of Ninja, whether that be the Dornfinger Firestarter that I just uh, reviewed. There's several pads, especially the Pulsars, probably the main one, that whenever I stuck it to my desk, I literally had to rip it off. Like, it was that sticky. And the thing that's really interesting to me is the Gecko, whenever it's on your desk, you can literally peel it off like nothing. Like, I mean, I have the plastic piece under it just because I'm trying to protect it right now as I have everything else. But this isn't like, it's not sticky in a sense that it's it literally sticks to you. It is just incredibly grippy, which is really interesting because typically it's it's sticky. This isn't sticky. It's It's just very grippy. So it doesn't stick to your desk. It just grips itself very, very well. So I did confirm with them. I wanted to say that several people have mentioned that the Gecko is an alpha cell base. It is not. It is a silicone film base. It is not a alpha cell base. So it is something that I did want to mention. And whenever we talk about the surface, it is a fine woven cloth. It's pretty s smooth and soft. It has a little bit of a texture, but not a whole lot. I mean, for the most part, it is super smooth. Um, it's not super soft, but it is soft. I mean, it's not like it has like any kind of texture like a heon or something like that. So it is definitely a softer surface. And in general, I mean, really just in terms of the performance and the speed of the pad, I've tried several different pads lately that I've kind of main in terms of speed. So when you use something like a Dornfinger, a Ninja, a Neptune, a Crucible, I think the Gecko falls in between a Dornfinger and the Ninja pad. It's a little bit slower than the Ninja. It's not as fast as the Neptune. It's not as fast as the Crucible, but it is still a speed pad. If you think about like balanced and uh, like full speed, I would probably put it like kind of someone in the middle, maybe closer towards the speed end. Um, it's not going to be like a balanced pad. It's not going to be. Uh, something like the Dornfinger, that's a that's a speed, but because of the X Soft is, is still slower. Um, even if you think of the review that I did a while back on the um, Pure Track P51 Samurai, that was really like a hybrid, but a little bit faster on the speed side. That's I mean, even the Gecko is a little bit faster than that, and this is kind of where it falls. It's kind of like in between a speed and a uh, hybrid pad. It's not a full-blown speed pad, but it is. it does provide a lot of speed. One thing I did want to mention just in terms of the performance of the pad is the longer that I've used it, the more comfortable I've gotten with it. This is a very good, I, I perform very well on this pad. So I have very good control. I have good speed, good stopping power. So I've definitely enjoyed using this pad. And when we talk about a speed pad, the next one that I want to talk about is the 4114 Aero Pad. And I gotta be honest, it took some time to get used to this pad. Typically, I mean, as a reviewer, I'm using 
multiple pads a week. If I'm testing, I'm generally only using that pad because I want to make sure at least for a week or two that I'm solely using one pad, getting used to it, and then reviewing it based off of how I feel. And at least in terms of trying different pads, there's certain pads like the Neptune, the Gecko, um, several other pads that literally the moment that I start playing is just like instant performance. I feel it. I feel comfortable. There's no problems. I don't have any issues with the pad. I started using the 4114 and I didn't feel precise. I mean, I was either under tracking, over tracking. Um, I, I just didn't feel very precise on this pad. So it did take some time to get used to, um, but I do think it is a solid pad. So whenever I first started using this pad, it didn't feel as fast compared to something like a Neptune or the Crucible. It felt a little bit slower. Um, but I mean, like I said, it, it took some time to get used to. I think the longer that I've used this pad, it has felt a little bit faster. I definitely think the skates definitely help. So, I mean, the four main mice that I've been using, I will put them all on my desk. So using all four, I have the ghost glides. I have the stock skates on the uh, MPL one. I have the WL mouse with uh, Tiger Ice, and then I have core pads obviously on the LA1. And personally for me, using the 4114 pad, the best performance that I've had in terms of skates is the Ghost Glides. And typically, I mean, I love the Ghost Glides. I'm a huge fan of Ghost Glides and all of their skates. Um, but this one definitely, I feel like at least in using the 4114 pad, that this is definitely a somewhat skate dependent pad. Um, I feel like, again, I performed better using these than I did on the core pads. Again, typically I can use core pads on just about anything. And I feel that consistency, obviously core pads are literally old reliable. I can put core pads on anything and be comfortable regardless of what I use. This one felt like it just, it wasn't really there even whenever I was using core pads, but it definitely felt better using the ghost glides and even the, the tiger ice skates. I didn't mention it in the last one, the stitching on the uh, gecko is very solid. The stitching on this pad is very good. Um, like I said, I didn't have any issues with the stitching. The surface is good and the base itself is a soft base. So, I mean, again, compared to most B pads, typically you're going to have someone that's a mid, so it's going to be as fast as possible. This is a soft base, so it's supposed to provide some more control. In terms of performance, as I mentioned before, I don't perform as well on this pad to something compared to like the Neptune, the Ninja, the Crucible, the Dornfinger, Firestarter, the Gecko. Um, there's several other speed pads that I prefer over this one, but this is still a solid pad. If you're looking for something that has a soft base, this is one of the few speed pads that I've used that actually have a soft base. Most of them are mid. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a soft base, this isn't a bad pad, but it's just not my best performing pad that I have. And last but not least, coming in at number three is the Ember Edge hybrid pad. And there's a couple of things that I want to talk about this pad. So first and foremost, it comes in at a whopping 600 by 470 and it's three millimeters thick. So at least in terms of a surface and a base feel in terms of performance, this is a mid, it is not soft, it is not extra soft, it is three millimeters, a mid base, and I mean, it doesn't have any cushion in the pad at all. So it is a hybrid, it does perform decently, um, but there are a couple things that I've specifically noticed on this pad. So first and foremost, before we get into performance, one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the stitching. The stitching 
is not tight whatsoever. The closest thing that I have to anything that has any amount of thickness of stitching that would be anywhere close to this would be the two original Soku pads, both the Akai and the Shiro. But this is, I mean, it's just not a very tight stitch. It's literally already coming apart. The stitching is not very good. So that is one thing that I wanted to mention. Number two is just the performance of the surface. So I will say this, whenever I, I use the core pads on this pad, it's fine. It performs pretty good. Um, and I don't have any issues whenever I use core pads, but really any other skate, it just doesn't feel as good. So using the ghost glides or the sock skates on this pad, they just don't feel as good. Um, at least with the ghost glides, it doesn't feel as smooth. I just get more feedback whenever I use the ghost glides. And at least for the stock skates, I mean, it doesn't feel stocks. I mean, the stock skates are a little closer to the, the core pads, but core pads definitely play very well on this, this pad. Um, the other two are okay, but if you're going to use an ember edge, I would definitely recommend using core pads. I, if anything, I would definitely not recommend using dots. Dots on this pad do not feel good whatsoever. Um, I can feel, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing under this, but the way that this feels, I mean, the best way that I can describe it, you know how, if, if this was a TV, you know how you see times where it's broken and it's just like a line, a line, a line, and you just see like random shades of gray and then the rest is black. Like that's literally how it feels. Like I'm literally touching like each layer of the pad i definitely don't recommend using dot skates with this pad at all again if you're going to be using an ember edge it does perform well when you're using core pads so i'm not saying that this doesn't perform well but it is uh it is very skate dependent to me i again would definitely recommend core pads using this pad all right, so we talked about all three pads today. We talked about the Gecko, we talked about the Arrow, and we also talked about the Ember Edge. Going through the list, that is literally how I would put it together. Number one, my personal favorite would be the Gecko. Number two would be the Arrow, and number three would be the Ember Edge. Personally for me, I do think the Gecko performs the best out of the three. I can use the gecko. I mean, like I said, using the gecko right off the bat, I performed well, no problems, no issues. I had no, no questions about that pad at all. Whenever it came to the arrow pad, it did take a while for me to get used to. And I mean, I am comfortable with it now. I did, I do think it did get a little bit faster. The more that I used it, it didn't feel as fast, but I think the more that I've used it, the more quicker it's gotten. And I mean, again, just going back to the uh, Ember Edge, it, it, does, it does perform pretty good whenever I use core pads. I'm not going to lie. It does perform well. It is a solid hybrid pad whenever I use core pads, but only whenever I use core pads. If I use any other mouse, if, I mean, just in general, I, I really... I'm just not a huge fan of the Ember Edge. Um, it is pretty big. So, I mean, I think if they were to update, if, I mean, if they did maybe like a 500 by 500, even if they did like a 490 by 420, um, or 420 by 490, even if they did something like that and they updated the stitching, I think the pad would have been better. Um, I, I, I think the um, base might need to be updated a little bit to help the surface of the pad feel a little bit more consistent with other skates. Um, but I do think the, the Ember Edge definitely has potential. It, def it just needs to work on a couple of things first. So with that being said, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comment section down below. And with that, I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.